Brendan O'Connor, you've barely aged a day. Thanks, uh, <laughs> thanks so much for joining us. Thanks. Thanks very much, David. I'm, I'm glad to say my fashion sense has improved somewhat. <laughs> no, no comment from me. Look, I, I'm interested in your thoughts looking back at uh, the you know, 2001 election, which Labor lost. You, you were opposed to things like offshore processing and uh, turning back boats. You were opposed to the GST back then as well. Hmm. Um, has Labor over that time become more pragmatic, do you think? Are we seeing a, a shift from Labor over those, those two decades to where you are now? Well, that's a good question. I think it's fair to say the context of my first speech was when I was very dismayed about the lies that were said about kids being thrown overboard. That was sort of the context in which I found myself in relation to that matter. Uh, to win an election based on um, demonising people uh, about a matter that didn't happen uh, really did incense me. But you're right to say, uh, over time, and, and certainly being in the two very significantly challenging portfolios of home affairs and immigration, mm -hmm. I realised we had to really consider our policies. And in fact, I'm very proud of the fact that I uh, helped change the platform and the policies of the Australian Labor Party. How hard was that? That can't be easy. <laughs> well, well, it took a number of national conferences, uh, but I really believe if we did not change considerably, we would not have been an electable political party and to the great credit of the Australian Labor Party uh, those changes were made but it was not easy. It's easy to tell your opponents you disagree with them. It's much harder to tell your friends mm -hmm. um, but uh, I felt look after the disaster that happened on Christmas Island of which I was having to mm -hmm. respond to as Home Affairs Minister not long after that there was the 2011 National Conference uh, and I debated, along with Chris Bowen and others, the need to make changes and changes we made. And that really ensured, in my view, uh, a, a political party that could be re-elected and have, have the confidence of the Australian people. So I'm proud of, of that very difficult debate, but one that needed to be had. Just reflecting, too, on that period back then, after the 2001 election, Labor went into this period of incredible turmoil. You went from Kim Beasley as leader then to... Simon Crean, Mark Latham, back to Kim Beasley, then you had Kevin Rudd, then Julie Gillard, back to Kevin mm. Rudd. Look, looking back on it all, you were there, you lived through it all. What was going on? <laughs> what, what was the cause of all of that turmoil? It's hard. Look, I think it's hard to know. I think that... But can I just tell you this? If, uh, the one thing uh, the current government uh, understands is we do not want to and we will not return to that conduct. And, in fact, the Cabinet is replete with uh, ministers who had, who, had, who had endured and experienced some of those tumultuous times and that really informs our current behaviour. Mm. Unified, cohesive, considered and ordered, chaired by in the Cabinet by the Prime Minister who understands fully that unity and cohesion and a proper considered Westminster cabinet and government is critical, yeah, okay. not just for the political party, but for the country, particularly when there are times of uh, you know, difficulty yeah. and anxiety in the community about a number then, of issues. Looking back then, what, what was going on? It, can you put your <laughs> finger on why the party was uh, in, in such turmoil? I think you, you think about a very long-term uh, Hawke-Keating period. Mm. Uh, you go into opposition, uh, and I don't. And you have, you know, you're having difficulty uh, transitioning from government to opposition. Uh, and I think it's very difficult sometimes for long-term government. Uh, governments who then go into opposition mm. to really find their find their way, and the same, of course, in the last nine years, the previous government had had changes. In fact, since, as you know, David, it, ha it hasn't been since John Howard that we've seen a prime minister go yeah. to the next election. But I can assure you that Anthony Albanese will be going to the next election to be re-elected as prime minister, be right. and that sort of cohesion unity is critical. Who is the best and worst Labor leaders you served? <laughs> Well, clearly, uh, Mark Latham turned out to be <laughs> the worst, uh, the worst uh, leader, uh, and uh, didn't uh, deliver, and certainly didn't perform uh, well, and uh, frankly, was a mistake. Uh, I think there's a number of people. I think you know politics is, is fickle, and there are people who could well have been prime minister, like Kim Beasley. Uh, uh, but, um, uh, you know, obviously, his, you know, circumstances also matter and sometimes you find yourself in a much better position, uh, you know, and... Uh, 
But in the end, it takes mm. a lot of grit. And Kevin Rudd deserves enormous credit, uh, winning the 2007 election. And Julia Gillard, uh, as the first and only woman Prime Minister of Australia, of course, mm. um, uh, did a re remarkable job in very difficult circumstances with minority government. Uh, so I, I'm very proud of those days, but I'm not proud of some of the indiscipline and internal yeah. conflicts that were unnecessary. And that's why you don't see that happening uh, under this government. You mentioned uh, that time as Home Affairs uh, and Immigration Minister. You've held many portfolios. I want to just uh, turn to another one, Defence. You, you shadow Defence Minister. Before yeah. the last election, when Scott Morrison um, brought to Labor, and you were in the room, the AUKUS deal, Labor, yeah. and you agreed to sign up very quickly uh, to that. Just take us into the room. What, what was going on there? How yeah. easy or difficult was that decision? Well, look, obviously the, the timing is compressed uh, because of the arrangement between two other countries. We're in opposition, so we don't control the processes. Uh, but the, the, the government did present to us the, the tenants and the framework of AUKUS. Um, the, the, the now Prime Minister and now Foreign Minister and now Deputy Prime Minister and I, as, as I was then the Shadow Defence Minister, were, uh, were, in, were being briefed uh, on those issues. Uh, and it was obviously a very significant moment for us as an opposition and for the country, frankly. Um, but the Prime Minister, uh, the now Prime Minister, the opposition leader at the time, Anthony Albanese, understood the importance of what was being put to us. We had conversations uh, about, about the matter uh, after the briefing. And then you might recall it was during the pandemic in September 2021, mm. so restrictions were still there. But we had to, in that very, very tight time frame, uh, convene a shadow cabinet and convene a caucus, which we did online, partly because of timing, but also because of COVID restrictions. And I just want to make it very clear, because I've seen contrary views, that the shadow cabinet unanimously ad adopted the submission uh, that was put to the Shadow Cabinet and the caucus uh, voted for the proposition without dissent. And then, the, and then we're in a position formally to inform the government that we supported uh, the direction that they were taking with respect to AUKUS. I want to ask you about Labor's relationship with the unions um, because you came into Parliament after being Assistant uh, National Secretary of the Australian Services Union. That's right. Your brother led the uh, CFMEU <laughs> until he fell out with, um, with John Setka, of course. Um, yeah. The relationship with the unions, has it changed much? Do, do the unions still have as much influence over Labor as they always have? Look, the, you know, the, the, the Labor Party sprung from the Labor movement. It's the oldest enduring political party in Australia, precedes Federation. And, of course, uh, to get political, uh, to, to, to be in the Parliament, to represent working people, uh, we've seen uh, the Labor Party uh, really be there since, since the beginning of this nation. And it is inextricably linked to the union movement. Um, and I think that's a good thing. Uh, it's good to have, uh, to, in my view, workers sitting around a table. Labor governments always sit around a table with businesses and workers. I don't think the Liberal Party can claim that they sit around the table with workers. I think that's one of their fundamental weaknesses. I'm a big supporter of tripartism working through national challenges by bringing constituent parts of the economy together. And I think doing it in a way that allows working people and businesses to sit with government is the best mm. way sure, but you to also, deal with the, you the also challenges these, we these problems. You also get these problems of bad behaving unions, like we're seeing with yeah, the CFMEU well. right now. I know Labor's suspended its ties. Do you genuinely think that union can fix its problems? Well, firstly, you see you know, bad behaviour and corruption in all areas of society, and if it happens in the union movement, it has to be, uh, it has to be stamped out. I mean, literally, there is no tolerance uh, for um, criminal behaviour, uh, and nobody's above the law, and that doesn't matter whether it's a union official, a union, uh, or a, a, a corporate director. Uh, and I think the Labor Party has been absolutely right, and Minister Burke has been absolutely right, in ensuring the appointment of an administrator uh, in relation to that union. Why do you think Labor's primary vote has tracked down since... I mean, you go back to 2001, sure, you lost the election, but I think your primary vote was up at, uh, well, nearly 38%. You won the 22 election, but uh, your primary vote was down near 33%. Why has mm. it been falling? 
Well, I think major parties generally have seen a decline in their primary vote, and it tends to be lower during the course of a parliamentary term where people are expressing their concerns about any mm. given issue. And it seems to rise as you get close to the election uh, to some extent. But I concede the point that you make, David, that major parties have difficulties uh, holding on to uh, as many voters as they once had. That's true. Um, I will say this, though. The Australian Labor Party is probably the only party on, the, on its own that actually could form a majority in the House of Representatives and form government. I mean, the Liberal Party does rely upon the Nationals to form a government. Uh, right now, it, the ALP, of course, forms a government on its own, and we're looking forward to doing that again after the election. All right, a couple of uh, ones to finish on the Prime Minister's reshuffle that he's announcing today. Who deserves a promotion, Brendan O'Connor? <laughs> Well, look, I'm, I'm friends to all of my colleagues, David, and uh, I think there are many people who, who, who are worthy of um, promotion. I think we're a good government. Um, we're not perfect, but we're a, a good government. Give, give me a name or two. Who should, who no, should I, get I just a leg think, up? Well, I, I think people mentioned Murray Watt. I think he's done a great job in agriculture, and, I, I look, uh, and, I, and he and I work very closely on the skills area. I think there's a lot of people, though. Um, it's great to see that it very looks like looks likely that Melendiri and, and Jenny uh, mm. will enter the ministry. Uh, they're assistant ministers now. They've both got remarkable energy and uh, talent, and I do look forward to watching them, uh, if that's the case, in the ministry. Obviously, the Prime Minister is going to be making decisions this afternoon, mm. David, in terms of the allocation of portfolios and uh, swearing people in tomorrow. So this is my last day as minister. And I'm he here I am talking to you. We do appreciate it. Probably Good. my last appearance. I think this is my 15th appearance on Insiders. Wow. So I there think it's go. about that's another metric as to why I probably should move on. <laughs> but, we, uh, we, do, been... we do appreciate it. <laughs> Just uh, I, I've got to ask you though, as you mentioned your, your role as immigration minister. I think Labor went through about four ministers during its time in government in the immigration portfolio. It's not easy. No, you, it's not easy. Would you be surprised to see Andrew Giles moved? No, it's not easy, and no, I think that may well happen. And, and the fact is, sometimes people should understand that you might reflect on the performance of a minister, but sometimes you should have regard to the nature of the portfolio. Some portfolios are very, very challenging, and, uh, and uh, therefore it's not always fair just to blame the person that sits in that portfolio, because anyone sitting in certain portfolios would find it challenging. I think that's, that's my personal experience from what I've dealt with over time. Um, and I think that's, you know, so I think we should take that into account when we're considering the character right. and capability of people. Final one, there is a vacancy coming up as Australia's ambassador to Ireland uh, <laughs> that you might have heard about. Your name's being mentioned there to replace Gary Gray. Are we going to see you in Dublin sometime soon? Oh, well, look, that would be a great honour. But as I said on Thursday when I uh, was at the press conference with the Prime Minister, and Minister Burney, my focus uh, after we after I leave Parliament, which is probably in six, eight or months of, uh, from now, is to focus on uh, my family, my daughter in particular, is doing year eleven this year, year twelve uh, next year, and I, and uh, from and you know, and I want to be focused on that. Uh, I um, it would be, it's I, I saw the speculation, uh, but my focus is right. uh, ensuring I do to, do the right thing by my, my daughter, who's been remarkably resilient and uh, allowed me to perform in these roles uh, for some time. Well, Brendan O'Connor, I think I've probably interviewed you in all of your various roles over the last 23 <laughs> yeah. years or so. I do appreciate all of them and uh, we wish you well. Thanks for joining us. Thanks very much, David.